We all know how important weight distribution is when it comes to a boat. If you forget to trim the engines down before trying to get on plane, the bow of the boat will just go straight up in the air and obstruct your view. If the boat is underpowered and you've got too many people and too much gear in the back, then the boat will do the same thing and you'll have to have somebody run to the front of the boat to get it to plane out. Or if you've got too much weight on one side or the other of the boat, then the boat can ride sideways until you drop one of the trim tabs down to level it out. And this can get even worse depending on what kind of current you are boating with or against. But then there is that other issue of having a boat porpoise, which is where the bow of the boat will begin to bounce up and down until you slow down a little bit and this can even get so violent that you can't even plane out the boat and get up to speed properly. And there are a few different factors that can cause this type of a scenario, which is what we are going to discuss today. So we've got videos on how to install an engine bracket on your boat, how to properly mount your engine and how high to mount it but we haven't discussed what this does to your boat if you wanted to do it. Brackets and four strokes have created a new level of boating when it comes to taking an old boat and restoring it. 20, 30, or 40 years ago, boats were designed to handle the weight of a two stroke and the thought of a three to 400 horsepower four stroke with its weight wasn't even a consideration when the boat was being designed. And the open transom concept on many boats was a huge design that was available for many years across many different brands like Grady White's and Mako's. But now a lot of people don't want to have this open transom when you're offshore and having to deal with water constantly coming in the boat. So the idea of taking these older boats Closing off the transom and adding a swim platform engine bracket with a new four stroke to create a whole new experience with that boat is super common. It's exactly what we did with our 23 foot Ocean Master from 1992. But something that is usually not considered though when doing this is what this does to the performance of a boat. And one of the biggest issues with doing something like this has to do with the weight and the design of the boat. The boats were designed to carry the weight of the available two-stroke engines and the length of the boat for its optimal performance. This means the boat would perform beautifully with the weight distribution of the hull and the engine the way it was. When we close off the transom, we are adding weight. When we install the bracket, there's that weight too. And then the four strokes can add even a couple more hundred pounds to this equation. So now we've taken say a 23 foot boat, added five feet to the back of it, and an extra five to 700 pounds to the back of the boat, which will throw the weight distribution equation of the boat hull way off. With this added weight and distance of the boat, a lot of times you can find that the boat will begin to porpoise at higher speeds because of the weight on the back of the boat and the added distance will be pulling the back of the boat down and driving the bow of the boat up. And as we go over the waves, this will increase into a rhythm known as porpoising based on the way a porpoise or a dolphin will go through the water. But usually in most cases like this, just some added anchor chain and weight in the front of the boat, even a windlass will fix this type of an issue. There are also other factors that can create this same porpoising experience in a boat. Things like the trim level of the engine, like we talked about earlier, if you forgot to trim the engine down before taking off, it will drive the bow of the boat up. The same thing can happen at speed if the engines get trimmed up too high. Those of you that have seen our video on how to increase your fuel economy know that a little trim in the engine will lift the boat out of the water. That is because when the engine trims up, the prop will get to a point where it is pointing slightly down into the water opposed to up. When this happens, it forces the bow of the boat out of the water, lifting the boat out of the water, increasing the speed of the boat. But we can go too far and create this same porpoising effect at higher speeds if we trim the engine up too high. Then with that same concept, if we look at an older boat, sometimes we can find that a boat will develop what is called a hook or a rocker in the hull. A hook in the hull is when we take a straight edge on the last four or five feet of the boat from the transom and make sure that it is straight. If there is an indentation in the hull, this is called a hook.
Then if we find that there is a hump here, that is what is called a rocker. A hook in the hull will take the water running under the boat while we are on plane and act like a trim tab, forcing the bow of the boat down into the water and then the rocker in the hull will act like the trim of the engine, pushing the bow up and making the boat porpoise through the water. There are all kinds of different reasons for a hook or a rocker to develop in the hull of a boat, but that is something that can happen and will make the boat perform with this porpoising effect. Now while we are talking about this concept, another thing that can affect the boat is the height of the engine bracket. If the bracket is too low, it can create drag on the bottom of the boat, sucking the back end of the boat down into the water, creating the same issue. as well as the engine height. On an outboard, we've got what is called an anti-ventilation plate here on the lower unit. Ventilation is what happens when the propeller is allowed to get too close to the top of the water and get air to be sucked down into the prop. This air makes the propeller lose its grip on the water and will cause the RPM to jump up and you will lose speed and performance. So the anti-ventilation plate helps to prevent the prop from being able to suck this air down into it. An issue that you can find with the mounting height is that if you are too high, then the plate won't work and you'll be ventilating all the time. And if the engine is too low, then the water coming off the bottom of the boat will be going over the top of this plate, causing the engine to be sucking the back of the boat down into the water, and thus porpoising again and losing a ton of speed. So making sure that the engine height is correct is crucial to the performance. Now another thing that can cause this type of an issue is something that is probably a lot less known, but yet it's still known by many and has an easy fix. This issue is actually something that we had to deal with when it came to the 34 Venture. There are a lot of boats that are older like the Venture and they have these pockets on the back here where the trim tabs recess into coming off the back of the boat. Now interestingly enough, when we switched over from the two strokes to the four strokes, that added weight to the back of the boat, especially when the live well was full, would weigh the back of the boat down and push it down into the water, which you wouldn't think much about, but when you went to take off, this recessed pocket here would be under the water and would have air stuck in them. Those air pockets would act like vacuums sucking the back of the boat down and holding it down into the water, not allowing the back of the boat to break free and get up on plane. Which is an extremely interesting concept when it comes to dealing with older boats and there are many of them that have this same style of recessed trim tab pocket. So the fix for this was to actually take through hull fittings and put these fittings here in the top of the pocket then run them up to the top and out the sides of the gunnel here so that the pockets could breathe and when you went to get on plane it would release the suction that the pocket had on the back of the boat keeping it from planing out properly. Which leaves us to wonder if you have ever had to deal with any of these issues in your boating career, let us know in the comment section below and if you're new here subscribe to the channel and visit us at bornagainboating.com. Don't forget to hit that like button and we look forward to seeing you all next week.